Sabadnay Dal. And this is the next segment in the series on East End Diving. This time, we find ourselves off the south shore of Block Island. Two and a half miles out, 60 feet below the surface, lie large boulders left over by the Ice Age. This area, with its current, has vibrant marine life, such as blackfish, bergols, lobsters, kelp, and a colorful garden of sea anemones that clings to the boulders. And now, the pinnacle, off Block Island. We uh, find the spot, drop our buoy, marker buoy, and then hook onto the wreck. But in this, in this case, case, it's it's an area that is completely unique. It's not metal. It's not a, a wreck. It's it's huge boulders left over by the ice age, and uh, they they span from the bottom up oh about 50 feet, and they're huge. There's a lot of growth on these boulders. Um, various all kinds of uh, kelp, sea anemones, and, and really interesting other things that are there too, fish and other forms of marine life. Uh, diving this area is completely unique. It's, it's not clear or as clear as the Caribbean. It's, it's different. Um, and in and, and, and that there's a challenge and a sort of a mystery and mystique about diving in the northeast here in, in, in around Block Island and Montauk and the Hamptons area. And these here are all sea anemones. They're all a, a, a real flower garden of, of sea anemones. And you can touch them and they'll just fold in because they're all alive. And they're all out there getting their, their food source in the water. And the colors are just fantastic. Uh, you wouldn't believe it because it is the Northeast and you say, well, okay, it's not like the Caribbean, but it has a, a unique value and beauty all its own. And as you look up towards the surface, you see these mini bergall fish and the stone surface honeycombed with these sea anemones that are just beautiful. And then you have kelp that interweave with that, that are also growing on these boulders. Sometimes you'll you'll have incredible visibility. I mean, we've had up to 50. 50 feet on certain days. Mind you, you know, a good ways out, the, the area known as the uh, warm waters of the uh, warm waters of the Gulf Stream and that makes for interesting mixture in the summertime. It, it sends a lot of the uh, warmer climate of fish up our way. And you see these little uh, striped butterfly fish, miniature, as big as your thumb. Uh, in certain areas and, and you're flabbergasted 
by the fact that, well, what are they doing up here in these northern waters? Well, they come up via the Gulf Stream. And here, uh, a ledge, even where blackfish and other types of fish can, can hide. Sometimes it'll be so difficult to even find this site uh, because there aren't any real jagged objects sticking out like a wreck. It's, it's boulders. And uh, you can hook to the sand. I mean, we, we thought we've hooked it and it's been in the sand. We've had to abort the dive and come back up and then find it again and re-hook to it. One of our local friends, the Blackfish. But when a lot of us divers go out here, it's, it's not like being on the golf course or, or being at the tennis court or even surfing. It's, it's, it's so uniquely different. It's hard to describe. You have to be there. And here, here's our marker buoy line. And we're going to follow that down, down uh, this ridge, rigid wall of honeycomb with sea anemones. The line continues down, oh, to about 60 feet in depth. And what we're doing here is we're relocating it so that it won't get entangled with the anchor line. And here's a, a small sand shark, sort of darting away from the camera. <laughs> Maybe we'll get him close up next time. Again, there, there are all different types of species of critters out here. But the elusiveness is, is the semi limited visibility and what's around the next corner. It might be a lobster or different types of crabs or even the northern sea anemone that you might bump into. Uh, and if you're a seasoned diver you can pick these things out. Whereas some divers will just cruise along and, and never see any of this stuff or they never take the time. But uh, if you look closely and carefully, you can really enjoy the, the beauty that's there. I always love this scene because it looks like you're, you're heading up to the top floor of a high-rise building somewhere. up toward the sun, toward the surface.
And here's what a full suited diver in full gear looks like. I mean, with hood, boots, a full wetsuit. Uh, complete protective gear for the cold. And the temperature can vary anywhere from 50 to 65 degrees in the summertime. Here again, the, the beauty of the, of the scene that you, you're shooting upwards from 60 feet below, and uh, you get this image that's very special. Whereas in the Caribbean, you're, you're dealing with clear water, and here, it's, it's, when it's clear, it's very rare, so that's a very special occasion. And on this particular day, it wasn't too bad. You want to keep your buddy in, uh, in sight, because diving together is a little safer than diving alone. It's almost as if in a dream, uh, the dim sort of visibility you get and the mystery, the intrigue of, of some of these sites that we dive. Divers check their air, make sure where they're at as far as depth, time, and what they have on their back, which is their air supply. And we head up toward the surface to find the boat. I'm, and I'm telling you, it can be a really good swim sometimes when the boat's a little further away. And maybe it's somehow unhooked and they have to run over to get you. Uh, and you want to swim toward them, toward the bow of the boat here, so that you're, you're working with the current, not against it. I'd like to say thank you to everyone involved in this production, Alan Esco and uh, the divers that, that dive with me, and especially Tommy Cooper for his contribution again to the wonderful music Tom provides. That make part of the dream come true of diving.
Sometimes we just sit around afterwards and uh, shoot the breeze. This particular day, it was pretty rough. It was a pretty rugged time getting out to the pinnacles. And then there are those days where you come up and the sun is shining and it's beautiful. And you shoot the breeze with the captain. So let's tune in with Captain Alan Isco. My yeah. wife is Ann, A-N-N-E, uh -huh. so is the Al Ann. It just seemed to fit in. Oh, that's super. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I married her. You know, I said, gee, you have a great name. Uh, <laughs> why don't we put them together? And uh, that's yeah, great. we did. We, <laughs> uh, well, you know, her I'm... name was um, Shirley. We never would have made it. <laughs> right. Okay. This is my number one camera person. Her name is Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Yeah. Well, I've been diving since 1955 strictly for sport, just a fun activity such as you're seeing the divers do today. Uh, going down just to enjoy what's there, see what's there, see the marine life uh, and enjoy it. It's just a sport. Alan, could you tell us something about, uh, we were uh, jockeying to get around this wreck. Mm -hmm. It was a wreck that happened four years ago. Yes. And it's a barge. It's not very big, and it doesn't rise too far off the bottom. Maybe it's 40 to 50 feet long, and there is uh, some current going and the wind, which is blowing the boat. So when we located the wreck on the graph after the Loran put us into the approximate position, uh, we then dropped a hook, a grappling hook, and back down trying to have the grappling hook hit the wreck. And the first two times it missed by a matter of inches because even though you put the, gra the grappling hook down right past the wreck, by the time you start moving the boat between the wind and the current, it moves it a few feet off and it took us three tries in 20 minutes to uh, hook in. You notice when the divers went in, the divers, there's uh, some signals that are usually uh, trans that transpire between the boat and the diver in the water. Universal diver OK signal is this, which works on water as well as land, and divers are close to each other, and they can do this. Other than that, when the divers go into the water or when they surface, and you might get a picture of this later, you'll see the divers do this or simply this with one hand, and from the boat we return the signal, and that means O for OK. A signal like this, yeah, everything's fine, might also mean, help me, I'm in trouble. Rolling. So if the diver uh, comes up and starts going like this, that means there's some kind of trouble and we have to take other measures, such as uh, jumping in the water and swimming after them, or throwing them afloat, or uh, uh, dropping the anchor line and actually moving the boat to pick them up. Fortunately, uh, that's never happened in five years. The diver was uh, so much in trouble that they required assistance. Usually they don't. Uh, most divers who uh, take dives of this nature are either experienced, and uh, it's the old story, where do you get experience if you don't uh, make the dive? A uh, diver with a little experience will buddy up with a diver of greater experience who uh, gives them the confidence to go ahead and utilize the training they've had to make an enjoyable and safe dive, which is the way most of them really are. Okay, a danger signal a diver might get low on air, uh, didn't follow his plan, which uh, meant that they came back to the surface with ample air, but because things happen or they get a little excited, breathe a little more rapidly than they, than they plan, they might find, found themselves, find themselves low on air, and a signal like this means I'm low on air, which is immediately followed by a signal like this, which means let's go up, you know, or just simply let's go up and I'll explain to you later. And when one diver wants to go up, uh, it means that both divers then go up. The diver might go, I'm too cold, you know, obvious signals, let's go up, I'm too cold, let's wait and just stay here and take it easy for a while, uh, or, whoop, I'm out of air, and then subsequently he might go like this, point to his mouth, means he's out of air, and he has to take appropriate steps, which might mean sharing the air with his buddy which might be accomplished by the uh, other diver carrying a spare regulator. Many divers do that. They go down with two regulators for twofold reason. One, their regulator might fail and they have a spare. Or the buddy might get into trouble 
and then they can give the spare regulator to the buddy and the two of them then come up sharing the air of the one diver. This is all part of training and divers are ready to do this, you know, when and if something happens in control fire. Uh, did you have any uh, exciting experiences? Uh, did you ever see any unusual fish or anything like Well, what we that? see out here in the summertime is something called an ocean sunfish, which goes by the intriguing scientific name of Mola Mola. And these, uh, well, we, we saw a couple of juveniles last year. We saw some full-size one that go to over a ton. And they're a fish over a ton, 2,000 pounds. They're about six foot long. The girth, you couldn't get your hands around them this way. Uh, on the surface, you see a fin flopping on the surface, which at first glance, people think it's a shark. But it's just their dorsal fin flopping on the surface. It's a very slow-moving fish. And we've had the divers jump in the water and run up and pet them. Uh, they are a tropical species, and they seem to drift up here with the uh, Gulf Stream. And once it gets warm, mid-July through uh, September, October, when we run across, or even along the coast here, and quite often going across the Block Island, on almost any given day, we can spot one mola mola. And we saw some giant sea turtles last year, some with shells all the way across swimming. Big heads like that, swimming along, on the lifted his head on top of the water, yeah, swimming along, took one look at the boat, and dove down. We haven't had an opportunity here, the way you do in the Florida Keys quite often, to dive with one. We've never found one on the bottom, but we've seen a number of them on the surface uh, in the past couple of years in the summertime. So that was very interesting. And then the whales come through here also in the summertime. Oh, yeah. You see uh, finback whales and uh, uh, blue whales come through. So it's a real active ocean here. And, uh, what about the dolphin? Any dolphin around? Hey, I haven't seen dolphins. It's been a good number of years since I've seen dolphins coming through the boat. I remember years ago seeing them in Long Island Sound, but I just haven't seen any. And now we can see just what it's like to have a procedure of hooking up to a dive site. Into the into the wreck. Uh -huh. That's our way of knowing where we are, our safety line. If we know where the wreck is, down the line, look around the wreck, come back up the line. Oh, I see. So you don't wander around. And yeah, it's a big ocean. We bob around out here. We can come up. We don't come up the ankle line. Then Alan's got to come and pick us up. And that's no good. Plus, it just gives us the stability of the anchor line to uh, make our ascent and descent on. So this is where you're reading it? The little curve? The little blip there. Yeah. What led them to it the first time was the fishermen would keep snagging the nets over the years in this area, so they knew there was something down there. It was just a question of looking for it in, in this area. Mm -hmm. I right, leave it, and I'm just going to drag it around in a circle. Huh? Oh, we're in. Wait a minute. I had it in reverse. You sure? All right, hang on for a minute. Don't let it hurt your hands. I'm in reverse here. Should pull out of your hands. No, you can't be in. I'm backing up. Whoop, it is. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Whoa, all right. Okay. Pull up. It's going back. Let's give a uh, less scope so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just pull up on it. Hi. I hope you've enjoyed the interesting marine life in and around the Pinnacles off Block Island.